My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Welcome back, folks. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you done some joint ventures already to bring on partners and grow your real estate investing business? Are you starting to think about going to that next level and getting into syndications? Well, that's the exact place our guest today is is at. Alex Bell is a very accomplished real estate entrepreneur. He's got a whole bunch of things going on with real estate investing. He's an active investor himself in multiple different markets. He's got uh, property management going. He's helping out a lot of people with that, doing the property management side of things. I believe in there. He's also a realtor. He's got lots of lots of sticks in the fire, that's for sure. So Alex, welcome back to the call. Dave, it's always a pleasure to chat with you and your audience. And awesome. Thank you Very so good. much for having me on. My pleasure. Give everybody a quick, you know, 30,000 foot perspective. What does your real estate investing business look like? Just really, really quickly. What what do you got for your own personal portfolio? What other kind of things are you involved in? Just to give people the big picture over. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, so my wife and I, we have a uh, real estate investing business together. And we uh, mainly operate on value add type deals uh, in the multifamily space. So we buy, renovate, refinance, repeat, and we use joint venture money for the most part. Um, what size of and, properties typically are we looking at here, Alex? Uh, anywhere. Our largest is nine, uh, 10 units, actually. So mm -hmm. we just close on a 10 unit, but we have a nine unit and eight unit. Uh, in total, we have, I think, 95 units or something like that, Low mid to low 90s. Um, and our, our current value of the assets combined is about $23 million, I think. In what terms markets of all, are you in primarily, Alex? Primarily, we're in the Hamilton uh, west end of the GTA. So Hamilton, even St. Catharines, Niagara, Welland, Bramford kind of markets. We have uh, now purchased and we own in Edmonton, Alberta. We also have bought and uh, own property in St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, we've also bought in Ohio, so in the U.S. So we have a whole like U.S. entity all, all set up as well. So, but your uh, but your primary market is in and around those areas. Yeah, ho home base is is in Hamilton. That's where our office is. That's where uh, a lot of the flips and things like that that we do are still there. So, you know, as you mentioned, we do property management for other people as well as ourselves. We buy off market opportunities that we can then repurpose and bring back into. The life cycle of housing um we do real estate agency work you do all kinds of stuff so um you know i yeah. just can't sit all, still it seems all, all things real estate okay very good so up until now you've been doing these smaller multifamily type deals with joint venture partners you buy them you fix them up you you kind of do a burr on these small multifamily properties yep. and you bring on joint venture partners who bring in most if not all of the capital you guys bring the deal, the team, the the knowledge, the management, and you share equity and, and profits. Is that typically how it's worked so far? Yeah. So typically our model has been a 50-50 kind of joint venture split. And so yeah. that's kind of a basic partnership model. It was good. We are boots on the ground. We have the knowledge. We know how to look for these really great profitable properties. And we partner with people who want to have real estate as part of their portfolio, but they don't know where to start or how to go about it. And they have full-time jobs and families and commitments. And by the time you're done after the day, you just want to lay your head back and you're done for the day, right? So um, we give people the opportunity to do that completely hands-off. And so that's that's been a, a really, really great um, way for us to scale so far. However, so, it so does... So what what's what are the challenges with that and why you're starting to look into the whole syndication side of things instead? Well, it, it tends to have limitations uh, when when you're considering buying like for example, nowadays when you're looking at simple duplex triplex conversions, the numbers don't quite make sense. So the only way you're going to make the numbers make sense is by having more equity in the deal, which actually decreases your return on investment and doesn't sweeten the deal as much. So um, as the market has really shifted and and so have we, it's actually just a natural progression, I think, in, in terms of my life and what we're doing. The, um, the work involved with a duplex or a triplex 
is not that much different than the work involved in a 10, 15, 20 unit building. Like the zeros get bigger, but in terms of your the level of time commitment that you have, it's not all that different. So we have a really succinct and great system towards management. In fact, we're managing our out of province properties from our central hub and we have kind of boots on the ground that can support. Um, so with that in mind, now it's like, okay, well, we've proven to ourselves that we can make a ton of money for us, for our partners in these, you know, we're, we managed to make it through this whole higher interest rate, you know, epidemic here that we've gone through and yeah. came out relatively unscathed. And I attest that to kind of learning from more old school real estate investors when I first got started rather than learning when, you know, you could buy the biggest piece of garbage and just wait a week and you'd make a 50 grand on it. Right. right. So I think that, that has really served us well. And, and even now when I'm looking at opportunities, I'm quite conservative and, you know, it's uh, that just sweetens the deal that much more. So when we really hit a home run, they're awesome. And so, so if for- I'm understanding correctly, the challenges with the joint ventures are, um, the, the properties you're looking at, you require such a big chunk of cash from your joint venture partners to make them make sense. Well, for sure. That's a little bit of a challenge. And even then, you know, the, your cash on cash return becomes a lot smaller because you're you're not as leveraged as you'd like to be. So does that mean that getting into bigger bigger deals provides more opportunities? But to get into those bigger deals, you start to look at syndications because you're going to need a lot more capital. Am I getting the gist or what well, am I Well, asking? yeah, for sure. If we're doing yeah. a joint venture partner on a smaller duplex, there's no point to bring on three or four partners because the cash flow is already so small. You mm-hmm. know, like what's the point? So you're, it's pretty much an equity play that you're doing at that point. When you're getting into larger multifamily deals, uh, and, and sorry, going back to that duplex, for very quick numbers sake, let's say you find a half a million dollar property and, you know, there's a $100,000 down payment at 20% down. And then you need to renovate it until a duplex, one hundred fifty thousand, roughly. There's two hundred fifty thousand gone, right? So yeah. typically, with one partner, that's a big, tall ask. And and so currently, our partners have done that, and it's been great. But when we're getting into syndication deals, it's actually easier in terms of my role as raising capital because I can talk to ten different people who each have fifty thousand dollars, and it's not every. You know, it doesn't stretch them out too far. Or Fifty thousand yeah. is kind of a comfortable number. Or five people that have a hundred thousand dollars. It's not the end of the world. These are manageable numbers, and as long as we're managing the property and the expectations, it, these can be incredibly profitable and really great opportunities for folks. So, all right. So a, you're you're getting set up to move into this indication space, there, Alex. Yep. What you're you're in this. The stage now where you're doing your homework and your due diligence and and figuring we're out. We're actually at the stage where we're vetting properties already. Oh, so nice. we've we've been already establishing ourselves in terms of soft allocating folks that are interested, and we kind of have a pool of of investors that are ready to pounce when we are. But once again, we whatever we're investing in, we're partners as well in these deals. So just because I can raise the capital doesn't mean I just got to go put it somewhere. We're very picky with not just the partners that we work with, but the properties that we end up buying, right? So the, the buying opportunity is is here. I think it's now. And so, uh, so we're just like, I feel like the slingshot has been pulled back and I'm just bracing to just kind of rock it out. So nice, but, nice. Yeah. So, so with your due diligence on doing syndications, what have you learned? Like what's, what are the biggest differences between that and what you've done with joint venture partnerships to date? I think the biggest difference is how we market these opportunities. And I think that we don't necessarily have to get into that at this stage. I have enough of a network and enough of, uh, of the people around me already who know and like and trust us yeah. that I don't have to go into that deep of a uh, of a rabbit hole. But that that's obviously you know once you you're kind of stepping into the big leagues, it's kind of like the 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 first uh, approach towards like how these bigger organizations raise capital. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the way I see it is kind of joint ventures, syndications, and then a fund, a syndication, a fund. There's no real difference except for a syndication focuses on one asset, whereas a fund focuses on many assets. But that syndication holds you accountable towards the performance of that singular asset. And so as we're um, as we're exploring things, I think the eventual goal would be to kind of move towards a fund space. 
um, we, you know, a mentor of mine uh, who lives in Pensacola actually was went to visit him in January. These guys are doing some remarkable things with with funds. I think they manage a four billion dollar real estate fund, wow. and yeah. they're uh, they're buying you know um, mobile home parks and and doing full resorts and all kinds of really cool stuff. And it's just it, you know the if if you can run the numbers and you can protect your uh, clients' investment, like any investment, there is risk involved. However, I think real estate is unique in the sense that it is. Um, safer than what your average investment would typically be. It's not a startup. It's not a business that can get ousted by some sort of new technology or whatever. People need to live places. So as long as, you know, our country holds itself together and population, you know, people are still interested in moving into the country and population still ends up growing. I think that there's a, a, a real great play for, for investors and real estate as a whole. And that's part of the reason why we're looking at places like Edmonton, Alberta. We're also also looking in places like Columbus, Ohio, uh, Knoxville, Memphis, Tennessee. So these are some uh, some really exciting next steps that you know have kind of pulled us out of our comfort zone. But I'm a analysis paralysis kind of guy, so I've uh, I've been had my head stuck in the books and doing all kinds of market research for the last little while, and it's proven itself to be a wise decision. So. What kind of properties are you looking at? What size properties? What kind of price points are you looking at at this point, Alex? So we just closed on a 10. I've got, uh, I'm running numbers right now on a 20, a 19, and a uh, 15. Um, those are in Edmonton. So that's kind of the progression that we're working on right now is just the, realizing that we've kind of got the model and the system down. So whether it's you know five units or ten units, it's very similar in terms of how we get things onboarded, how we get the tenants to start communicating with us and learning the new systems and how they have to you know put together maintenance requests and that kind of stuff. So it's been very beneficial to have the property management side married to what we do because all our systems are in house and it creates this very neat efficient type of machine that runs and we all are there communicating together so it's a uh, it's been really great and eventually my goal is to get into like the 50 100 unit properties and yeah i was wondering at, at what point does it make sense to switch from the joint venture model to the syndication model because usually there's a a, a fair chunk more expense involved with setting up the legal structures and all of that kind of stuff to do a syndication versus a joint venture. I yeah. kind of, have you figured out what your sweet spot is for making that, that shift? Like I'm in, in around, like, I mean, you could syndicate on a 10 unit, a syndication doesn't mean that you have to go through any a syndication could mean it's a, a, you know, a shareholder structure. You know, you could just be all under one corporation and mm -hmm. everyone owns shares of corporations. So you don't have to go too complicated, um, of course, typically when you get into like a, a syndication, you do like a GPLP structure once you get into much larger deals. Um, so those are also things that like we're, um, we're leaning towards. I think for that kind of ordeal, when you're in GPLP structure, you're probably looking more into like the 30, 40 plus units um, just to make it worthwhile. And then people can enter and exit very easily versus mm -hmm. having to actually like, you know, get lawyers and all that kind of stuff involved every yeah. time people need to take your, their Fair money reason. back out. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. Very, very cool, Alex. So it sounds like you got a lot on the go. What what are your plans for the next 12 to 24 months? Where do you see yourselves going? Well, we are expecting baby number four, funny yeah, enough. Today, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's on the personal side of things. So that's very exciting. Um, right now, our goal is actually we're bringing on a lot of third-party clients on the property management side. We're at, I think, about just the low hundreds, like 110 or 115 units we're currently managing. Um, but we're hoping yours to get and to other work. people's or other people's uh, yours and uh, ours and other people. We're about a 65, 35 split, 65 yep. ours, 35 third party, but we're, we really haven't done much marketing. So we're cranking the, the dial on that. And then, um, uh, yeah, we've got a, a couple of flips on the go right now as well. So that's going to be really exciting. So I'm hoping by the fall, those will be wrapped up and then we'll have a couple more cycled in. And yeah, so right right now it's just been kind of elbows to the grindstone where uh, we got this 10 unit, as I said, and by the end of this year, I'd like to be in two to three more acquisitions in terms of larger buildings. 
um, specifically on Alberta. So that's Exciting the plan. Stuff. That's the plan. Yeah. Awesome, Alex. If people want to connect with you and find out more, where can they go? Just go to www.palpropertysolutions.com. If you can see it, Pal Property Solutions, um, you'll see our website. You can get to learn a little bit about who we are. And from there, if you guys want to reach out, um, you know, there's all kinds of boxes that you can fill your information in. And as well, Instagram, uh, Pal Property Solutions, you can follow me on Instagram. And it's a great way to connect. I check it all the time. So awesome. Well, hey, keep up the good work. You're busy, busy, busy. And it's thank you, my friend. Bearing fruits. Keep up the yeah. good work. Nice, All right, everybody. Uh, nice chatting. Take care. We'll see you on the next episode. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit MoneyPartnerFormula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.